So what are the best options to use when studying? Should you be using Cisco Packet Tracer? Should you be using GNS3? Should you be using Cisco Viral? Or should you buy physical devices? So that's kind of like asking, what's better, a Ferrari or a Land Rover? It really depends. If you're going off road, a Ferrari is probably not the best vehicle to use. If you're on a racetrack, however, you may prefer a Ferrari versus a Land Rover. It often depends on the situation. So let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of Packet Tracer, GNS3, Viral and Physical Equipment. And then I'll give you my opinion and you can make your decision. Now rather than forcing you to watch this entire video, My personal opinion a few years ago was to buy physical equipment. GNS3 had limitations in that it couldn't support switching. So often when studying for CCMP or CCIE, you had to buy physical equipment. The world, however, is moving towards software and network virtualization. NFV or network function virtualization is a very popular term these days. And we're often told that software is eating the world and networks are moving towards software rather than being based totally on hardware. So my personal opinion before going any further is that in most situations, the ideal software to use is GNS3. I still often see today incorrect information on the internet where people are stating that GNS3 doesn't support switching. That's not true. The best way, I think, to run GNS3 is to use viral images with GNS3. So as an example, you can use a Cisco IOS V, a layer 2 image in GNS3, and that provides all kinds of advanced switching. There are very few things that you cannot emulate or simulate in GNS3 today. So don't believe what you read online or view on YouTube where people are telling you that GNS3 cannot be used for CCMP. False. Or GNS3 cannot be used for CCIE. False. Or GNS3 doesn't support advanced switching. False. That is entirely incorrect. I've done almost anything and everything with GNS3 these days, and that's one of the reasons I really like GNS3. I have physical equipment, but I hardly ever use it because GNS3 can simply do everything and it's a lot quicker and easier to spin up topologies with GNS3 and then spend my time learning or creating videos rather than cabling networks. Just have a look at my YouTube channel for other videos showing all kinds of complex GNS3 setups if you want to have examples of what's possible. But that being said, GNS3 can support many, many options, but even though the software is excellent, it does have some disadvantages. So let's have a look at some of the other options. 